Truths of the last days. That's what we're going to be looking at today. So first of all, we're going to look at what the Apostle Paul said. The Apostle Paul gave us instructions on the last days. And he said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, speaketh expressly, that in the latter times shall, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible tells us that in the last days, this is the last days before the tribulation, in the last days that people will be following seducing spirits and devil doctrine. Devil doctrine. I'm going to tell you what some of the devil doctrine is today. We have a movement in the world. I can't say America, but in the world of prosperity gospel and that can relate you can mix in truth to the prosperity gospel and thank God for the truth of Jesus Christ dying and raising again from the grave but then you have people that are saying that if you get saved you're going to be wealthy health wealth and prosperity are the signs of salvation and that's not necessarily true that's not true God wants to bless his children and the Bible tells us he always wants to give good but it's not necessarily true that you're just going to have health, wealth, and prosperity because you asked Jesus to be your Savior. That's a lie. And so this is a characteristic of the last days. 2 Timothy chapter 4, the Apostle Paul said, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own loss shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. This is just like what we said, following the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Here it is again. The Apostle Paul is writing that, that they shall follow their own laws. They shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. These are teachers that are communicating ideas about oh, Christianity, but also mixing in devil doctrine. And friends, that's the sign of the last days. And we need to be wise. We need to have wisdom. We need to understand exactly what the Bible says, what the last days. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. The Apostle Paul said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. So we know that the Bible says that perilous times really will come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's the number one characteristic of the last days, that men love themselves and not sacrificing themselves for others. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. And then it says covetous. And then it says boasters. And then it says proud. And then it says blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. These are all the characteristics of what it means that men shall be lovers of their own selves. Well, the normal. And people, let's think about what Jesus said. Jesus gave us warnings. Now don't forget, there's the last days of the church age and there's the last days of the tribulation. And, the, and they're similar. You see, the last days of the church age are foreshadows of what the last days of the tribulation will be like. Only the tribulation will be, you know, 10,000 times uh, more wicked. And so, last days in the church age, which we are in today, because the last days started when Jesus ascended into heaven, and it's been following along as characteristics of the church age for the last 2,000 years. And we've seen an increase. Is Jesus Christ coming back today? Uh, you know what? I'm looking for the imminent return of Jesus Christ. He could come back at any time. Praise the Lord. No one knows the day nor the hour. But that doesn't mean that we can't be wise and understanding the days, you know, and Jesus gave the parable in Matthew 24 of saying that you can discern the weather by looking, you know, red in the evening, you know, red at night, sailors delight is what we have as our cliche. Red in the morning, sailors take warning. You can discern the future by looking to the clouds. Or you can discern the future by looking at the trees and seeing if it's getting ready to blossom or bloom and you know it's going to come. But why can't we discern the future of what the last days looks like. The wise man can. And so, let's look at Matthew chapter 24 and consider what Christ said about the last days. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Isn't that similar to what the Apostle Paul said? That there will be those communicating doctrines of demons and saying that they're of Christ. And Jesus warned us about that also. You know, I, I think about Reverend Sung Young Moon, about 15 years ago, maybe less than that, he had a big wedding in Korea where he had all these thousands of people getting married. And people follow Reverend Sung Young Moon. Sung Young Moon says he is God's representation of Christ on the earth. Yeah, there's a blatant person saying, I am Christ. And we know that the Moonies, 
is a cult of deception. But yet people love it because they're poor, they're broke, they want to follow someone that's going to give them health and life. And so the, so the Moonies take over, you know, and, and they watch, and, and, but that is a deceitful, that is a characteristic of the last days. Characteristics of the last days hasn't been happening for the last month or since Joe Biden's been in president. Now, the characteristics of the last days have been happening since Christ left this earth, and we've seen different periods of time in the last 2,000 years that have increased and then have decreased. And so many shall come, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3 gives us an insight, <coughs> proofs of the last days. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, so the disciples are asking Jesus, and this is what they're asking Jesus. They're saying, Jesus, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? See, the disciples wanted to know about the end of the world. Yes, there is an end of the world. The Jews knew about the end of the world since the nation of Israel was created. The, the apostles didn't say, hey, by the way, we didn't know about the end of the world. There's really an end of the world. No, they've been taught that before Christ. The end of the world is coming. And it's real. And it's true. And they asked Jesus, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? So let's consider that first sign. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. So one of the signs of the last days is that there's wars and rumors of wars, and ye shall hear it. Not only is there wars, not only will be there rumors of wars, but ye shall hear it. Today we live in a nation, in a world where wars and rumors of wars is like big time news. Now, of course, today in the making of this video, just last night, February 21st, 2022, Russia invaded the eastern section of Ukraine, saying these are pro-Moscow sections of Ukraine and they belong to Russia. And they moved the tanks in, they moved the trucks in, and they moved people in. And they're saying, we're taking this ground for our, that's a war. And that's a, uh, that's a war, and that's a idea of rumors of war. And, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, our president, Joe Biden, some call him Sleepy Joe. He's, he's behind. And uh, will America stand up against people who are invading other people's rights? I don't know. That's not for me to say. I'm a, I'm a minister of the gospel. I'm not a politician. And it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that Jesus said in the last days there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. And so one of the characteristics of the last days and proofs of the last days is wars and rumors of wars. A characteristic of the of last days. It says, For there shall rise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Bible tells us that the elect will be challenged. And, and some in the house of the elect will fall because they are not truly born again. And even the elect will be challenged. And the elect should be warned. And Jesus said if those days were not shortened, the elect would be hurt. And so I don't know what those days not be shortened. But... You know, if they throw an atomic bomb on the earth and we move the earth on an axis, our daylight will be reduced. And our 24-hour period could be shortened to maybe like an 18-hour period or a 12-hour period. You know, and a man has the ability to blow up itself. And if we hurt this earth and we shake it and we use nuclear missiles to shake it and we tilt it, everything's going to go crazy. Well, maybe that's it. Or maybe we'll hurt the moon by sending a missile to the moon and the moon won't be able to shine correctly and be off the orbit around the earth. And maybe that will hurt the day and the night and make night much longer. Or maybe it will just be that there will be government laws of saying you're not allowed out of your house after 5 p.m. Everybody in their house, you know, 5 p.m., you're in, can't be outside. Got to do what you have to do between 8 and 5. Maybe that's it. I, I don't understand what it means when it says that those days were shortened, as uh, it tells us in Matthew. But there's going to be false Christ, and there's going to be false prophets. And they're going to show great signs and wonders. They're going to do great things. What are great signs and wonders? Well, maybe they're going to do miracles. Maybe they're going to do healings. Maybe they're going to give great amounts of money. You know, I'm amazed how much billions and trillions of dollars that our country is giving to others and different things of that nature. I'm just amazed by that. And uh, it's just an amazing thing. Well, how about this slide? For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The Bible tells us proofs of the last days. We need to keep our eyes on the skies because the Bible tells us that Jesus is coming back out of the east. So we need to be shining toward the east. That's what we need to look at, toward the east. 
in the skies. The Bible says, for out of the east shining even unto the west. So it's going to not only come out of the east, but it's going to cover the whole entire sky. So if you're looking east, it'll cover all the way to the west. Because the whole world's going to see that the Lord's going to come. And it's going to be quite impressive. And it'll be like lightning. It'll be in its blink. The Bible tells us in Corinthians, it'll be a twinkle of the eye. We shall be changed. And, and, and that's how fast it will be. Lightning, twinkle of the eye, change. Boom, done. That quick. And so we ought to watch. And, and we ought to be big believers of the imminent return of Jesus Christ. And looking for that blessed hope. Jesus said, proofs of the last days in Matthew 24, verse 38. For as in the last days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that no entered into the ark. And so one of the characteristics of the last days is that they're going to be, they're going to be eating, and they're going to be drinking, and they're going to be marrying. So people are going to be like living a life of prosperity and living a life of generosity of, t of food. And they're going to be drinking. They're going to be getting drunk all the time. And they're going to be marrying. They're going to be giving in marriage and going to weddings. And weddings is going to be the big thing. And marriage. And, you know, and they're going to think this is what life's all about. And in the midst of all that, boom, Jesus will be coming back. I'm not saying boom too loud for you, am I? <laughs> all right. What does Jesus say? The, we looked at what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. Now we're looking at Christ's prophecy of the proofs of the last days. And Christ's prophecy is Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Jesus said an end is coming. An end is coming. And what is that end? The end of the world. It's not just an end of something, it's the end of the world. But before the end of the world, a big characteristic, and one of the proofs is this gospel. The word gospel means good news. The message of Christ's victory over death and over sin. Good news. That message will be preached in all the world. And it's going to be preached for a witness to tell others that Jesus Christ is Lord and King and sovereign ruler over the universe. Amen? And you see, Jesus is coming. And Jesus is coming back. And our message is to tell the whole world that Jesus is coming back. And see, don't you think that the whole world is hearing the message today? Through radio, through television, through satellite through the apps that we're using and through websites and through Facebook and through YouTube and through all the different ways of communicating the gospel. The gospel is going out into all the world. And you see, now that we know that the gospel is going out into all the world, that's a proof. That's a big proof of the last days. The apostles couldn't get the gospel out to all the world. The church, early church fathers couldn't go out to all the world. The missionary movement couldn't get the gospel out to all the world. The modern missionary movement from 1800s to 1900s, and even in the last century of, of uh, you know, 1950s uh, and 60s, 70s, 80s, they couldn't get the gospel to the whole world. Today, 2022, we can get the gospel to the whole world. That's amazing. And we are close to the return of Jesus Christ. There's a, there's a sign right there. So, what should we be doing? What's our application? We should be getting ready. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. You see, Jesus is coming back. And we should abide in him. And we should be not ashamed, but have confidence, excitement, joy that Jesus is coming back. Some are watching me and saying, man, this guy, he's, he's over the top. Listen, this is the best news in the whole world. Jesus is coming back. Notice in 1 John chapter 2, verse 28, the Apostle John, now we're looking at not only Christ's prophecy and Apostle Paul's prophecy, but the Apostle John's saying that when he shall appear, there's an appearing coming. Jesus is going to be appearing. And so people say, why do believers think that Jesus is going to come back? Because the Bible says, here we have another passage, when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. See, he's coming. So we need to have confidence. We need to be ready. We need to get our act together. One of the things we need to do to get ready 
is in 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 15 says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready. You've got to be ready. Ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ready that he's coming back. Ready always to give an answer to the, every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You see, Jesus said we need to be ready. The Apostle Paul said we need to be ready. The Apostle John said we need to be ready. The Apostle Peter said, be ready. Always. You see, that's what we need to be doing. We don't need to be getting caught up in the sensationalism of all the different characteristics of the last days. Although it's important to know, and we should be understanding of the scriptures and know what's going on with that. But our job is to be ready. We should be ready. How do you get ready? Well, what does the Bible say? First chapter, First Peter chapter 3. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Sanctify means to set aside. It means to prepare. It means to have the Lord first priority in my life and put the Lord Jesus Christ first. That's what it means. And you see, we need to be ready. We need to be ready to give the gospel. We need to be ready to love others. We need to be ready to stand up for righteousness when wickedness is saying it should be first. We need to be ready to tell others the good news of Christ's love for them. Always be ready. You know, sometimes bad things happen to good people. And when we have bad things happen in our lives, that's when we need to be ready. People are going to say, Ken, how do you handle it? Why do you do that? That's unbelievable. And they say, well, Jesus Christ is empowering me and giving me grace. And Jesus Christ is helping me with all this. And Jesus Christ gives me his peace. When others are looking for bad things, I'm looking for good things, even though bad things may be all around us. We can have God's peace. You see, we need to be ready. Are you ready today? You see, if you're not ready, you can be ready by asking the Lord Jesus Christ to come in your life. You can be ready. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I'd like to encourage you to call on the Lord. Have you ever had a time in your life where you called on the Lord Jesus Christ to come in your life? And friends, if you've never called on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can by simply crying out to the Lord by faith and inviting Jesus Christ into your life.